Good afternoon Grazie. and sì. welcome sì. to this new season of the newly appointed faculty member seminars. So Professor Marta Scorsetti uh, is associate professor in diagnostic imaging and radiotherapy at Humanitas University uh, since the 1st uh, March of 2016. But she has been working here for a long time, for almost 13 years, as director of the radiation oncology and radiosurgery department. She graduated in medicine and surgery at the University of Milan, and uh, she obtained her postgraduate degree in radiology and radiation oncology in the same university in 1998, uh, working essentially at the National Cancer Institute uh, in Milan. She has been in the board of directors of important national and international associations in the field of radiation oncology and coordinator of working groups of the Italian Association of Radiation Oncology. And indeed, she is a real authority in the field of stereotactic radiation technologies, with her main research and clinical activities focusing on the development of innovative models for high quality care in cranial and extracranial radiosurgical treatments, in primary and metastatic brain tumors, and in lung cancer. She had a very good track of publication with more than 100 PubMed hits. And uh, today she will give us a seminar entitled, as you can see, Stereotactic Body Radiation Therapy for Liver Metastasis. So I'm very happy to give her the stage for the seminar. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here. It's a great pleasure. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Duga for uh, his kind presentation. And today we will talk about radiation therapy. And radiation therapy is one of the most common treatments for cancer patients. We treat uh, cancer patients with solid tumors and hematological diseases using ionizing radiation. And radio surgery is a special kind of radiation therapy. And uh, using radiation surgery, we can give a very high dose of radiation in single fraction or in few fractions, usually in the brain, and we use the term of radio surgery. But we can use also radio surgery in the body. And the term is stereotactic body radiation therapy also called the stereotactic ablative radiation therapy because we are able really to ablate, to destroy all tumor uh, cells uh, in, in the body and sparing organ cell risk. And this is a very important issue because we can increase the efficacy of the treatment and reduce toxicity and reduce side effects. So I uh, would like to show you a brief video just to have an overview how radio surgery works. If you or someone you love has been diagnosed with cancer, radio surgery may be recommended as the first line of treatment or in conjunction with other treatments such as chemotherapy. Let's take a look at how it works. Radio surgery, a powerful technique for fighting cancer, was first developed to treat very small tumors in the brain. Now we can use radio surgery to treat tumors almost anywhere in the body. Despite the use of the word surgery in its name, radio surgery does not involve the use of a surgical knife. Instead, we use a highly focused beam of radiation to target a tumor with surgical precision. Radiation fights cancer by damaging the DNA within cancer cells, inhibiting their ability to reproduce. When the damaged cancer cells attempt to divide, the tumor shrinks or dies. Before treatment begins, your doctor will request scans of your tumor using a CT, PET scan, or MRI. Then, using sophisticated software, your clinical team creates a 3D model of the tumor and surrounding tissue. Your team then uses these images to determine the number of beams needed to treat the tumor, the appropriate radiation dosage, and the number of sessions required to deliver the full treatment. A common way to deliver radiosurgery is with a linear accelerator, or LINAC, which is designed to deliver the radiation precisely to a tumor while minimizing the dose to healthy tissue. To achieve this goal, inside the LINAC is a device called a multi-leaf collimator, which shapes the radiation beam. The leaves of the multi-leaf collimator shift or move to shape and reshape the radiation beam to match the size and position of the tumor from any angle as the LINAC rotates around the patient. You may have heard the term radiotherapy as well and may be wondering how it's different than radiosurgery. Radiotherapy is delivered in smaller doses, five days a week over several weeks. In general, radiosurgery is administered in higher doses in only one to five treatment sessions. 
In some cases, radiosurgery may be an alternative to conventional surgery. Radiosurgery may be used for tumors that are otherwise inoperable and provides doctors and patients with more treatment options for challenging cases. And radiosurgery is a non-invasive procedure, meaning there are no incisions. Treatments are delivered on an outpatient basis. As with all cancer treatments, radiosurgery has some potential side effects. Typical side effects of treatment are area-specific and include, but are not limited to, skin changes, fatigue, diarrhea, hair loss, nausea and vomiting, urinary and bladder changes, or trouble swallowing. Other serious side effects may occur. We recommend that you talk to your doctor about whether radiosurgery is right for your treatment. He or she can answer any further questions you may have. Thanks for joining us. Okay, great. Now let's start with the presentation and we will focus about the use of SBRT for liver metastasis. Metastatic liver disease is a common complication encountered by cancer patients. Actually, 30 to 70% of patients have liver metastasis at autopsy. The most common primary sites are colorectum, breast, and lung cancer, and the majority of patients presented with multiple metastases in the liver. However, a subset of patients who present with solitary or limited number of liver lesions show improved survival after surgical excision. This is a very important thing. So we talk about oligometastatic patients Oligometastatic patients may be characterized by the presence of few metastases in the number of five metastases in one to three sites in the body. So maybe lung, maybe liver, maybe pelvis. And treatment strategies for this kind of patients should include the complete ablation of all tumor masses using surgery and or local ablative therapies. Historically, surgery has always been the only option with potential of cure, and if done with a um, curative intent, it has the potential to achieve five-year survival rates of 25 to 60%. Unfortunately, only 20% of patients are found to be resettable. So what kind of ablative options are available today for the remaining 80% of patients? In recent years, alternative modalities such as radiofrequency ablation, microwaves, uh, transarterial chemoembolization, and also percutaneous ethanol injection have been developed. And these local treatments have shown good local control rates, uh, but have a certain grade of invasiveness and serious limitations, such as in the case of large lesions or lesions close to the portohepatic region. So, stereotactic body radiation therapy could be a non-invasive alternative to surgery or to other invasive treatments. With SBRT, we are able to deliver a very high dose of, 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 of radiation to small lesion in the body, usually uh, three centimeter for maximum six centimeter. Otherwise, it's not SBRT, it's radiation therapy. And we can give this very high dose in a single fraction or few fractions, usually five fractions, sparing orgas at risk. This is very important because we can spare the, the yeah, dose to the healthy tissues and so reduce toxicity and improve the tolerability of the treatment. So this treatment is very uh, indicated also for fragile patients elderly patients, and in our department we have an increasing number of elderly and fragile patients and patients with comorbid conditions. Uh, data from the leisure tool reported um, um, data from prospective clinical trials about the use of SBRT for liver metastasis reported very high local control rates. Uh, you can see in our study we have one year and two years, uh, 94 and 90 uh, percent local control rates, very similar with the data uh, from Rastoven study. However, these series are difficult to compare because of the heterogeneity in the primary tumor sites, in the number of liver lesions, in the doses across the study. 
Uh, in Rastoven study, they treated 47 patients with one to three liver lesions with maximum diameter of six centimeter or less with 60 gray in free fractions. And here you can see the actuarial local control rates uh, for lesions uh, and uh, also uh, in the, for the global uh, patients. At uh, one year and two years, local control rates were 95 and 92%. Uh, Two-year local control rates for lesion with a maximum diameter of three centimeters or less are 100 percent compared with 77 percent for lesions greater than three centimeters. So, uh, they found a correlation between the local control and the two tumor diameter. So apparently there is a decrease in local control with the increase of the dimension. Um, this is another very interesting paper. It's a pooled analysis published by three very famous and prestigious academic center in the U.S. And the patients with colorectal liver metastasis, they have one to five lesions, received one to six fractions of SBRT. Uh, 65 patients with 102 lesions were retrospectively analyzed. The majority of patients received uh, um, uh, more than one chemotherapy regimen prior to receive SBRT, and 42% received more than two regimens of chemotherapy, so they are uh, evenly uh, pretreated. And when evaluated separately by a multivariate analysis, the total dose, the dose per fraction, and the biological equivalent dose all correlated with uh, local control by lesion. So they conclude that for a free uh, fraction regimen of SBRT, a prescription dose of 48 gray or more should be considered, of course, if uh, normal tissue constraints allow. So if uh, uh, we would like to be ablative, we have to deliver 48 gray or more. This is a single experience, very innovative experience, uh, recently published by our colleague Robert Timmerman. We are dear friend, and uh, they are really innovative because they uh, published this phase one dose escalation trial about single dose of radiation therapy for liver metastasis. It's a small study, but it's very interesting because patients with liver met were treated with single fraction as BRT. They treated the small tumors, peripheral tumor, uh, and this tumors were located outside of the central liver zone. This is important. And seven patients were enrolled in the first group with a prescription dose of 35 gray in single fraction. Then the dose was escalated to 40 gray in a, a single fraction, and seven more patients were treated at this dose level. Here we can see the patient's characteristics. They treated different tumors, different primary sites. And there is also a clinical case, uh, the, the lesion at MRI prior to receive SBRT, three months after SBRT and six months after SBRT. So very nice result with complete response. And um, local, uh, local control of irradiated lesion was 100% at median imaging follow-up of 2.5 years, so uh, great news. And also two-year overall survival for patients was 78%. So it, it's a new thing, it's a new strategy. We have to try in a prospective, other prospective trials, but it's a new thing. And there, our experience, we carried out a phase two trial of SBRT for patients with liver lesions. The primary endpoint was uh, in field local control. Secondary endpoints were toxicity and overall survival. Eligible patients met these criteria, inoperable or medically unsuitable for resection, maximum tumor diameter of six centimeters or less, one to three hepatic lesions, good performance status, a good compliance to radiation treatment. And uh, the dose prescription was very high, 75 gray in free fractions, because we would like to be ablative also for large lesion. This is the aim. And uh, if it was not possible to respect the dose constraints, uh, we, uh, a dose escalation, an initial dose reduction of 10% was provided, and further dose reduction of up to 30% were feasible. 
those constraints is very important because we have to limit toxicity, so we have to limit uh, the dose to the healthy tissue, and uh, for the abdomen, we respect these constraints, and the healthy tissue are, of course, healthy liver, spinal cord, kidney, stomach, duodeno, small intestine, intestine, heart, and rib, so it's very important to avoid toxicity. 61 patients were enrolled in this trial, and um, uh, the most frequent primary tumor sites were colon and breast cancer. The majority of patients uh, had had prior liver directed therapy, so radiofrequency surgery, different things. And the majority of patients had no extrahepatic disease. Only 34% uh, of patients had controlled extrahepatic disease. And uh, we treated a total number of 76 lesions. The majority of patients had one lesion, and uh, 18 and 3% of patients had two and three lesions, respectively. So 62 lesions received the total dose of 75 grain free fractions, and only uh, 14 lesions uh, were treated with a, a dose escalation. Uh, and uh, these are the local controls. Uh, we have a six month the actuarial local control was 100 percent, uh, 12 months 94 percent, and 22 months 91 percent. This is very very good results. But a subgroup analysis for lesions with diameter uh, uh, maximum diameter of three centimeter or less compared with those greater than three centimeter revealed no statistical differences in local control rates, exactly showing the efficacy of SBRT also for large lesion. This is a very important question because Professor Sorbiati is really the leader, the expert of radiofrequency ablation and microwave ablation, but there is a limit because the limit is four centimeter in diameter. So uh, there is a problem for larger lesions and we can have an alternative using SBRT. Overall survival at 12 months, 84%, at 18 months, 65%. Uh, these results are good considering the unfavorable selection of patients. So it's not too high, but the patients are, uh, it's unfavorable, the selection. Regarding toxicity, uh, we, had, uh, we had 4% of patients with G2 toxicity consisting in vomiting, skin erythema, and pain, and only 26% of patients presented with G2 transient transaminase increase with spontaneous resolution. So this is a very well-tolerated treatment. In three days, they have uh, very great results uh, without problems. We had uh, no uh, radiation-induced liver disease that usually occurs uh, two weeks to four months after radiation therapy. is a syndrome characterized by an apotomegaly ascites uh, and uh, elevated liver enzymes. And we have no radiation-induced liver disease. And no G3 to G5 toxicity were observed. We have only one case of G3 chronic chest wall pain treated with anti-inflammatories because we have to be very careful with the doses to the cost, the ribs, and so it's very important. And just a technical uh, question, um, it's very important imaging for us because we have to be very precise and accurate. So there is the first step is the simulation of the patient. So we have to acquire CT simulation. Uh, it usually is free phase contrast enhanced CT, but we use also MRI with uh, contrast, uh, specific contrast for the liver, and uh, sometimes PET according to the, the primary tumor size for colon, for breast, yes, for renal carcinoma, no. And we use a abdominal compression with personalized body mask just to limit the problem of organ motion. And we acquire 4DCT and we have different kind of uh, systems to, to control the problem of organ motion. So the tracking and different system, if you uh, like to, to see, you can come in the department, a very attractive system. And this is a case of a, of a patient with two liver lesions. This is the treatment plan. The isodose is in, in red is very high dose to the lesion, and in green and blue, uh, low doses. This is the abdomen the abdominal compression. This is another case of a patient with a local recurrence close to the surgical cavity. There is the clips, 
and we use the clips as fiducial markers. Because for us, it's very important to provide an image-guided radiation therapy. When the patient is on the coach of the LINAC, we have to acquire imaging, combium CT. This is a combium CT. And we have to use some markers, some fiducias, just to be really uh, precise and accurate day by day. And this is the case. This is a local recurrence. It's a local relapse close to the surgical cavity, PET positive. This is the treatment plan. The patient received 75 grain free fraction, so very high dose, very ablative. And this is the PET negative six months after radiation therapy, also with the decrease in blood uh, tumor markers. And this is the case of a patient with single lesion from breast cancer. Uh, she's inoperable for severe cardiovascular disease. She received 75 grain in free fraction with negative PET six months after radiation therapy. We can know that the B, uh, BMON time is approximately two, three minutes. So the time for irradiation is very short. And this has a positive impact on the problem of organ motion. So the, the, ses the session is in 10 minutes uh, and uh, is very simple. This paper addresses uh, the, the, the re results of SBRT uh, for patients with colorectal liver metastasis, only colorectal liver metastasis. We treated uh, 42 patients for a total number of 52 lesions. The majority of patients had one lesion, 12 and 7% had two and three lesions, and they received a total dose of 75 gray in free fraction. And here we can see the local control, very high local control, at one, two, and three years. The local controls were 95, 90, and 85%. And uh, uh, we found no correlation between the local control and the lesion size. The median progression free survival was 12 months. Here we can see the overall survival. And we find <coughs> a correlation between the volume of the lesion and the survival. Of course, uh, uh, smaller lesion had <coughs> better survival. About toxicity, very nice result. No radiation-induced liver disease, no G3 to G5 toxicity were observed. 25% of patients presented with G2 transient hepatic transaminase increase normalized within three months after radiation therapy. So we conclude that SBRT really could be a feasible alternative for patients inoperable or not eligible for other local invasive uh, therapeutic approaches and showing optimal local control and promising survival rates. And this is the case published in the paper. The patient presented with a local relapse close to the surgical cavity, but also with another uh, lesion. And we treat these two lesions uh, with uh, ne PET negative uh, three months after radiation therapy. This is an elderly patient with single liver lesion from colorectal cancer. Uh, he is inoperable. For severe COPD is the single lesion, evilly pretreated, and uh, this is a very positive uh, PET scan, negative six months after radiation therapy. So very nice results. And uh, very recently, uh, this is the very recently published ESMO guidelines. It's a, it's a pleasure for us because uh, uh, these guidelines include the use of SBRT, uh, and we made our positive contribution in creating evidence in this field. So we are really happy about this news. And uh, so in conclusion, current evidence, including our experience, uh, shows good feasibility and efficacy of SBRT. And future directions uh, include Improve the selection of patients, of course, uh, with favorable prognosis to evaluate the impact on survival. To carry comparative randomized trial with other local procedures, and so radiofrequency, microwave, or taste. And uh, there is another very interesting possibility to associate SBRT with uh, 
systemic agents, and so chemotherapy, target therapy, immune therapy, uh, there are different type of uh, combination. And also in these fields, it's, it's a pleasure for me because we recently opened this trial here in Humanitas uh, with Professor Solviati. There is a great collaboration. And we start this uh, trial, it's a, it's a randomized trial about SBRT versus microwave for inoperable colorectal liver metastasis. Patients with one to three liver metastasis uh, until uh, four centimeter in diameter uh, are randomized to receive SBRT or microwave, just to compare this. And this is the only study <laughs> actually present in the world, so we hope that <laughs> we are able to enroll patients, but this is a great news because uh, I think we can reach really more evidence in the future because uh, it's, it's very important for the patients to have possibilities to have alternatives, to have different kind of modality to treat the same disease. Uh, we, we are um, uh, in the direction to personalize the treatment. So we have, it's very important to have the possibility to do this. So this is uh, the conclusion because <laughs> thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions.